Hey everyone, I'm really sick today, so my voice sounds kind of weird, but I wanted to make a quick video about a comment that I got recently for my last video. I was talking about a few tips that I wanted to share about neuroplastic pain management, and one of the comments talked about having a poor experience with a coach at a gym, um, where the person felt very dismissed by this coach and I had a similar experience I wanted to share first and the second thing I wanted to share is actually um, a list of um, kind of a strategy that I brought to my current coaching and trainer experience um, based on what I learned from my prior experiences so um, to take it back a few years, I worked with a trainer um, in like my late 20s. This was maybe like five years ago or something. Um, and this trainer, for the most part, seemed great. Um, they specialized in chronic pain management. And for me, it really was a transformative experience for a couple years. I was pain-free for the first time in as long as I could remember for like a couple years solid, which was incredible. And I learned a lot um, about body mechanics and how to work out and breathing techniques and strength building and strength training and basic nutrition and all these things, which is great. Um, and in terms of like a trainer, this person I felt was great as a trainer. However, um, about maybe a year and a half of working with them, or maybe a year, I can't, I can't remember, I'm not great with like remembering timelines and years and dates and stuff, but a while, a good while into working together, they, that she introduced this like nutrition program that she had in combination with her training. And she was like, do you want to do this? And she presented the basic outline of what it was, and I said, sure, you know, I can learn a little bit about basic nutrition while I'm doing my workouts, like, yeah, that sounds great, no problem. So I started to do this nutrition plan with her um, where she outlined, like, you know, suggestions for what types of food I was eating and what quantities. And I was to keep a food journal, like a detailed food journal of what I was eating. So again, at first, I was like, okay, no problem, sounds good, whatever. I didn't think much of it. Um, and the idea was that I would do this for like a few months, get the hang of it, and then I would stop the food journaling because I wouldn't need to do it anymore. So again, I was like, okay, fine. So I'm doing the food journaling for a few months, and um, there were several times where like, like there was one time where I had had pizza that day, and I had had a couple of slices of pizza at my job as a therapeutic riding instructor as like a celebration because it was the end of the summer for the kids and we wanted to have a pizza party and so I had a couple of slices of pizza at the pizza party and I thought nothing of it like I've never had any um particular issues around food I was like whatever you know I just wanted pizza <laughs> so I had a couple of slices and I put that in my food journal on the next day um the person she she was like oh like you had pizza yesterday in like a super judgmental tone and I was like yeah like I you know we had the pizza party blah 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 and she was like, oh, okay, well, you know, just sometimes I guess you make bad choices. And I was like, oh, like, okay. I didn't think it was a bad choice, but all right. And it was just like, that was the moment where I was like, huh, like, I don't like that sense of judgment. Like, I thought we were just doing kind of like an informal, like, basic nutrition thing. Like, didn't realize that my food choices around pizza would be like, harshly judged um so that was the moment where I was like okay like I don't really think I want to do the food journaling thing anymore too much longer long story short um it took me like another month or so maybe two months to actually tell her that I wanted to stop the food journaling because by then she had become quite like militant about me needing to bring in my binder and look at all the entries and stuff like that as I was feeling more and more distant from that practice. And I was beginning to feel like 
I was almost being pressured to eat too much food to the point where I felt like too full multiple times a day and I was gaining weight at an uncomfortable rate. Um, and yes, you know, it's true that yes, when you're training to lift heavy weights, yes, you do want to be eating your food, of course, I understand that. But I was just realizing like my goals for what I wanted to do with my workouts, I didn't really want to be like a power lifter. I didn't want to be lifting super heavy weights. I literally just wanted to work out, be generally strong, generally fit, be physically able, and to be able to move and function with my body every day, just do normal things. But her goals for me, apparently, was to like be like a power lifter or something because that was the amount of food that I was being pressured to eat. So anywho, finally I expressed one time like, hey, I don't think I want to do the food journaling thing anymore. And I was met with this like backlash and I was like, whoa, all right. So to like appease her, I kind of like placated her and agreed to keep on doing it. For like another week or so and in that time I was like this doesn't feel right I really don't want to do this I don't like being pressured to do this so finally I came back to her and I was like hey like I really thought about it I don't want to do the food journaling anymore it's making me feel really anxious and nervous about food which I've never felt in my life and I'm worried that it's going to contribute toward like a disordered eating pattern or something and I express that and in that moment the trainer like threw down the paper that I had handed her she walked away from me and then she started yelling at me <laughs> and like uh for for like a solid maybe like 10 minutes or so and I was just like silent because like I was so taken aback like I'm here working with you I'm paying you to train me and you're being ver verbally abusive toward me? No, I'm not gonna fucking deal with that. And so, funnily enough, the next person came in for their appointment, and of course, the moment the next person came in, then she stops yelling at me, right? Once well, there was another person there to like witness the abuse that was going on. Um, and so, I went home that day, and I was like very torn because, again, I had made so I can't understate the amount of progress I had made in my general fitness working with her. That was excellent. I had like no complaints there. I loved the training portion and that expertise. That was all phenomenal and great. But the militant nutrition thing, I didn't want to do that anymore. And so long story short, rather than like us, rather than her talking to me as a client and being like, hey, if you don't want to do the nutrition, Thing, let's reevaluate what your goals are in terms of strength and we'll make some adjustments and you'll continue. No, she just dismissed me as a client that day um, because I didn't want to continue with her nutrition program and I was basically being too difficult. Um, even though from my perspective, I thought I could just go back to where I was before the nutrition program was ever even presented to me and I could just go back to training which had been presented as the option all along. <laughs> so I thought like, okay, I'll just stop this and go back to what we were doing. But to her, because I wasn't like in 100% in every single way that she could control, um, I was just done. So from there, it was very traumatic for me because again, this person, I had trusted them to work with me to help me get physically better, which I had done and, and, it, all, and it all worked great. And now I was being like abandoned, so totally not okay. I ended up researching other places in the area that I went to, started working with a new trainer, super nice guy, like very, um, very down to earth guy. Um, I really enjoyed working with him, it was great. Um, however, I, I did feel that he kind of, you know, wasn't the best match in terms of my needs and goals like as they related to the neuroplastic pain thing, which at that time I didn't even know was called neuroplastic pain. I didn't know much about it. And so I couldn't really provide him with the education um, that maybe he needed to get up to that level for me, which was fine. So then the pandemic happened 
and I had to stop working with him because the gym shut down. And then finally I reached back out to that same place after also going to physical therapy during the pandemic and spending thousands of dollars in physical therapy and not really making much. I mean, it was helpful, but I didn't make much progress compared to strength training. So finally I went to this new place. I found a new trainer. I met with him, all great. And this is where the list comes in. I made this, this letter to him and I want to share it with you for advice in case you find it helpful and maybe you want to do something like this when you work with a trainer in the future. And I said, hey, hey, you know, blank trainer name. Um, below is a summary of my current needs and goals with training and a resource list about my health condition, which affects my training. I said, sometimes it can be difficult for me to talk about it. So it would mean so much to me if you took a few minutes to browse the resources below to learn more about the current medical evidence-based brain science approach to understanding perceived danger pain, aka neuroplastic pain or chronic pain. I've lived with this since I was 16 after experiencing a life-changing emotional trauma, um, but I'm doing a lot better today. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so then I said, healing my condition has taken a lot of work over the past year through a consistent combination of trauma therapy, self-care, exercise, medical cannabis for symptom management. I'm very proud of myself for the progress I've made, and I'm excited to continue along the path of collaboration and progress instead of perfectionism. I'm really looking forward to working with you, and I hope this info is helpful. Please uh, feel, free, feel, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'll be happy to share more info and resources. And then I listed a block of resources here, and I'll link this whole document in the description if you want to take a look at it and copy it and use it for your own resources. More resources here. Then, and this part is key, I just typed out things that really help, like general stuff that helps in terms of training. And I said cultivating a sense of trust and safety, silliness, fun, laughing, feedback or cues on how to optimize my form or alignment during exercises, collaborating about which exercises to do, and then I said specifically, if talking about pain, please use neutral language. For example, please use words like sensations, discomfort, feeling a little off, more intense, less intense, or symptoms instead of pain, aches, spasms, stiffness, etc. Um, and I listed a few other things. And I also said that him learning about neuroplastic pain would also help me because if you have neuroplastic pain, Believe me, you spend enough time thinking about it, you don't want to also be having to educate other people about it who don't understand. So in my opinion, you can provide them with the resources and then they can spend time to do their own education to work with you. Then I wrote things in red that do not help, things that we specifically want to avoid. So please don't ask me if I'm in pain or if an exercise is causing me pain. I'll tell you. Don't ask me. Don't put that thought in my head to worry about. I'll tell you if it's happening. I also said, please don't mention or draw attention to my mobility aids like rock tape on my knees or on my back. Um, just don't mention it. I just don't want to think about it. Believe me, I think about it enough. Don't want to talk about it. Um, I don't want it pointed out. Please don't talk about aches, pains, injuries, or violence in general um, unless, you know, uh, I, I bring it up for some reason because again I spend enough time obsessing about it with OCD I don't need to, it to be brought up to me and to fixate on it more um, and to have more of that negativity um, and then also not talking about nutrition or diets I said I'm working on this facet of my health with my doctor um, and it's not something that I need to be doing with a trainer you know and again I worded it differently in here you can take a look at the document if you want um, then finally, I listed my biggest long-term health goals in terms of exercise, um, which is literally just to safely train for optimal function in my everyday life and longevity. Um, it's not about weight. It's never been about weight. Um, it's just about you know feeling physically good in my body. And then I listed my current short-term goals and what I'm working on to accomplish those, like increasing strength and flexibility and mobility. Um, you know, and when I do those things. Um, and then I outlined like what my, my current um, exercise routine is and how I want to move forward. So that wraps it up, you guys. I hope you found this really helpful.
please, if this is helpful to you, please do take a moment and take a look at the link in the description below of this document. This is just my document. You can take it and, you know, download a copy and edit it to your liking. But I really recommend taking time to print out a copy and email a copy to a trainer if you are going to be working with them to really be super clear up front about what your needs and goals are because I just want to prevent for you. I want to prevent you ever going through a traumatic or abusive situation like I experienced. It's very common, unfortunately, in the gym and the training world. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who think they know everything, they have a power dynamic that's imbalanced where they're in more power than you are because they're the one literally guiding your exercises. And I just want to emphasize it's really important that you recognize that you're an equal partner in this. You're actually the one hiring them and you want to collaborate with them. You don't want it to be a power imbalance. You just want to collaborate with them. And finally, I'll just say, I love my trainer now. I am so grateful that I made this and I shared it with him. He received it so well. We, you know, we maintain a really like professional um, working relationship doing the exercises. And I just really appreciate how he listens to these requests and he honors these needs. And I feel safe to, you know, do the exercises. And for me, that's a really big deal considering what I went through previously and what I've gone through since and in general. So I just want to say, you know, thank you to him. I don't know why he would ever see this. I don't think he knows about my channel, but on the off chance he ever does, thank you. And I encourage you to do the same if you are looking for a trainer. And by the way, totally final note, I would encourage you, whether or not you have neuroplastic pain, um, to consider moving your body regularly, seeking out a trainer if you don't know how. Again, do your research, find someone who's qualified. Don't just settle for the first gym that you walk into and the first trainer that you find. Search for the ones in your area. Maybe consider working with someone online as well. Shop around, look at different prices, examine what your needs are and what your goals are, and find someone who will be aligned in that for you, okay? So I hope this finds you well. Please go outside, get out there, move your body within a pain-free range of motion. And if you need guidance, reach out for help. I hope this finds you well, and I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.